And I send greetings uh, from sunny Switzerland to all the sites globally. I will introduce to you a project called Roboi, and I will also tell you something about our anniversary of the Artificial Intelligence Lab. So my name is uh, Pascal Kaufmann. I'm a, I'm a brain researcher, and I work together with Rolf Pfeiffer. And uh, I'm one of the project coordinators of this human robot project called Roboi. And you see this little guy uh, on the right side. And I think it all started with the Etcher robot project. Um, many of you are probably familiar with this uh, project. It looks a little bit scary. It actually is uh, like a human skeleton into which we have inserted motors and, and artificial, like, like artificial muscles, uh, tendons, and actually also has kind of a spinal cord, which is uh, flexible. And uh, when you also look a little bit at this picture, uh, how this uh, robot hand was built, it is kind of an abstraction of a biological hand with tendons. And what is very interesting to, to note here is we chose an abstraction level, which we think uh, is a useful abstraction level because on this space we can uh, um, set out to build interesting robots with interesting behavior. So when I look a little bit where these H robots have been, they have traveled the world already. Um, for example, this is... Um, one of the brothers of Kronos, this is uh, EDS. He is one of the, uh, the most advanced uh, robots in the Edge Robot Project. And um, when he waves at people, you see that children, they like this. And um, when you then meet uh, people, also when you are clearing customs and you have this robot in your hand package, you can imagine that the policemen there uh, pose many interesting questions because it looks a little bit like, uh, like a dead body when you have it in your bag. And this is also something that is a little bit uh, uh, polarizing, yeah. Then uh, this is how um, the Edge robot look like today. We, uh, we built an artificial shower. You see also the, the motors, how these motors are located, not like many other robots, like in the hands or, or where the, the joints are, but they're really located there where actually all the muscles would be. So we really try to mimic also the interior structures of the, uh, the human body. And uh, of course, uh, this project raised many questions. Uh, also, you see this, this, this fear there, like consciousness and all these kind of, of, of topics that we try to avoid uh, to, to even uh, touch or to talk about. But these kind of, of questions do then emerge. What is possible these days? What can we do? Where is AI uh, these days? And uh, I show you a, a short video. It's, it's on YouTube, and I think with this you can have a better understanding how these robots really look like. So this is Hugo uh, uh, Marquez. This, uh, this robot is to mimic as close as possible not only the human appearance, but and, also uh, the And when you look at the movements, of the, of the human body. they look uh, so it biological plausible. And tendons, which are elastic. Not only can the, it the video display. Really complex uh, structures like that of a human body. It has the forearm rotator or the shoulder blade, which are activated by many muscles, and all this needs to be in, um, coordinated in order to get uh, meaningful uh, movements. What we think is that these robots have a really good potential to interact, uh, better potential to interact with the human environment, with the unstructured environment than uh, typical uh, robots do. Typical robots are basically uh, made according to standard engineering techniques. They are made stiff, they have actuators on the joints, whereas if you see a normal, where, where, if you see one of these uh, robots walking, they typically walk quite, quite stiff. And what we think is that if you have a robot like this, you basically can outsource the computation for the for the mechanics of the human body. So you can use, for example, the passive compliance to make it absorb the energy in the right way, to allow for safe interactions, and, um, and to basically also to store energy in the muscles, Not which gone. can then be released can you switch to the next? Uh, fast movements. OK, I'll show you another video, which is uh, rather recent, like uh, two or three weeks ago. I arm wrestled with uh, one of these Edge robots. Yeah, it's good, yeah. And uh, you see here, actually these motors are um, quite, quite powerful. They have, uh, it's not so easy to beat this uh, HR robot. Of course, it's also a little bit fake here, but yes. actually it is, it is uh, surprising how strong uh, these, these, uh, they are. 
And um, it is really biologically plausible when you touch yeah. the arm, the entire body shakes and moves. And this is actually uh, uh, what natural behavior is, is about. It, so what's next? And now I'd like to start with this Roboy thingy. Um, you can become friends of these HR robots. Um, Kronos has about 2,000 friends already. And uh, um, the other robots are a little bit less famous. But you can uh, contact them. They accept your friend requests. And uh, I think they are in a relationship or it's complicated. So it's interesting to, to read um, how Kronos uh, actually interacts with other robots worldwide. So Robo 2013 should be the, the culmination of our know-how here. Uh, it bases on 25 years of artificial intelligence research here in, in Switzerland. And we try to, to compile, to merge all those design principles, all what we have learned. And we like to demonstrate that in one robot called Roboi. And um, yeah, it's also, um, it, it should look cute. Some people say it looks a little bit scary because it is also like a skeleton. The interesting thing is Roboi is not 2 meters and 10 centimeters high like the Kronos robots. They look really scary, like if, if you see them in front of you, uh, they look a little bit like Terminator. But if you are standing in front of Roboi, Roboi is 1 meters and 20 centimeters high. So it looks cute, it is not scary, it's not dangerous because it's so small. And this is what we also like to achieve, that we build a charming robot which is uh, made for the public and which also uh, triggers and fuels discussions about uh, where does humanoid robotics uh, go. As you see, this is not just a boring robot uh, which then would sit on a chair and looks like a human and you can kind of remote control movements. This robot should be able to interact with you and we even try um, and to build an interface so that you can um, communicate with that robot. So we can pose questions and this robot will reply to that questions. The technology that we use in the brain is, is uh, built from an external company. And actually, this is also our approach. We do not build all by ourselves, but we collaborate with many partners worldwide in this Roboi project. So one company is building the head, the, the exterior appearance of the head. Another company is providing the brain. A third company is providing the torso. Maybe there is another company who provides the, the tendons. We are still negotiating with that. There are the Moxon motors, which are providing the motors. So you see, this is a, it's kind of a, a very international project. And uh, it's very ambitious, because within only nine months, we built this Roboi. So we started in July 2012. And we hope that we will uh, be able to complete Roboi by uh, uh, beginning of March 2013. And the problem that many artificial intelligence researchers have, or actually that many scientists have, is they build excellent things, but no one knows about these things. And this is something that we try to avoid with this uh, robot project. Therefore, we, we um, uh, set up a, a second project, which is called Robots on Tours. And we try to um, invite all significant humanoid robots worldwide to come to Zurich in March 2013, and when we have built this global platform where many uh, people attend and uh, where also the, the interest of the media should focus on, then we would present this Roboi um, robot. And um, just I switch to here so that you see this. So you see it on the picture here. It is um, a little bit similar to this, to this Swiss flag, but this was not on, on intention. We also have it in the blue version. But you see from all directions, Humanoid robots walk to, to, uh, to the Pulse 5. This is a, a conference center here in Switzerland. And when the world is actually looking at this conference, this humanoid uh, robot conference, then we would present them Roboi. And this will be in the 8th and the 9th of March in 2013. So please note down that date, uh, because I think it will be an interesting event. And hopefully, we will be able to finish and complete Roboi by then. So I. Uh, share some more details about Roboi. You see it looks a little bit like a baby skeleton. Um, actually, walking will be a big challenge. So in order to uh, manage expectations, we will not be sure whether or not we achieve that, that it really walks, because tendon-driven walking has not yet uh, been achieved. Um, and you see the, the goals are very ambitious. So maybe it, si it, it, it uh, runs on a bicycle, this Roboi. Maybe a Roboi will sit on a chair, but at least he should be able to move the legs and the arms. So we will see 
how far we, we can get. And um, yeah, three bullet points. Uh, the AI lab philosophy is, is a goal, so we like to demonstrate our design principles. The second thing is uh, how do we actually finance such a robo project? Normally we would hand in proposals, it would take us one or two or even three years until we have enough money and then maybe we could start with building such an ambitious project. And we do it the other way around. We just start, we build Roboy, and we set up a website called roboy.org and we ask the, the public, the worldwide community of internet users to donate money to fund Roboy. So actually you can buy parts of Roboy you can say, I invest 50 Swiss francs or $100, and the more money you invest, the bigger will be your name on Roboy. So you can uh, engrave your name on single bones of, of Roboy. And actually, if you invest like 100,000 Swiss francs, you will have a big name here close to the heart of Roboy. And then worldwide, when this Roboy will be displayed in many medias, they will see your name. So this is actually the approach of crowdfunding here. We like to, to trigger a global interest in this project and to dig up money and, uh, and to speed up processes here. So this is also a, a second goal that we have to, um, I would not say revolutionize, but just to speed up financing processes. And finally, nine months for all the biologists among you, you know, these nine months is not uh, uh, by chance here. It is also a little bit to, to, to trigger thoughts. How long does it take to copy paste the robot? Actually, serial production is also a goal here. We like to be able to, um, to copy Roboy. We like to be able to produce Roboy like in the tens or in the dozens uh, because it is built uh, in, in COD and uh, it's not like handmade single copies like we know that from the HR Robot project. Okay, this is the website. I, uh, please check that website out and please buy uh, big bones and try to reserve and engrave your names there. I think there is some space left uh, to, to, to be able to, to write your names on, on the bones. And actually, there is a 50% discount for Shanghai lectures participants. So you do not need to invest 50 Swiss francs, but you can just invest 25 Swiss francs. And we already write down your name on Roboy. And of course, it is cool to have you guys uh, participating in this uh, project. Yeah, uh, I, I skipped these technical details and um, I like to show you a final video here. Um, actually, this video was also sponsored by crowdfunding. So yeah, it's to, to the best of my knowledge, it will be one of the first complete humanoid robots that we built in Switzerland. And uh, it actually attracted already a lot of media attention and it would be be really cool to have you on board and uh, if you have uh, inputs or if you like to contribute or participate you are invited to do so and I think I caught up a little bit with the schedule and thank you very much for your attention okay do Pascal, you have thank you very much do you have questions for your uh, present uh, for your presentation <coughs> and uh, I would just like to add that the project, an additional bullet point, is completely open source. So basically all the designs will be posted on the internet for anyone to download and to reproduce. Also what we will do, because I personally don't like the head of the robot, we had some additional designs made. We will put them on Facebook and then people can vote on which of these they actually like best. Which of these robots that they like best. Actually, Roboy has also now a Facebook profile since a few weeks. So in case you're not yet friend of Roboy, please do so. And then I will show to you the, the head designs because we need to have a cuter head. And uh, Rolf and I, we have some different opinions here. Therefore, we give it to the audience. Please vote for the heads that we present to you. And then we take just the head with the highest number of votes. Yeah. Do you have any questions in Switzerland or in Moscow or somewhere? Mm, I'm not sure. I'm Go not ahead. sure that uh, uh, it is a correct question. By uh, could you please estimate approximately uh, the ratio between uh, actuators and uh, sensors unit in your robots? The last part of the question I did not understand. The actuation the 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 relation yeah. between actuators and sensors in the robot. You know how many actuators? Not, not relation. Um, not relation. Not relation. Uh, the ratio. Ratio. The ratio between uh, the ratio. amount 
of uh, yes. actuators and uh, tensions. Okay, I get it. So the number of motors, um, actually, uh, Chronos uh, employs about 50, uh, 50 motors, actually 40 that are running, but yeah. 50 motors yeah. were planned. Yeah. 50 motors, yeah. And uh, in Robo, it will be in the same uh, number approximately, maybe less. And the number of sensors is, al sensors is always a problem. Like this is an unsolved issue, I would say. Also, which sensors do we take and how do we then read out the information? So the, ra the ratio is really poor compared to biological systems. Like if you, if you take a finger, for example, there are hundreds uh, of sensors and we really struggle to, to have like a few sensors running on, on, on one like square centimeter. So this is a big issue. And unfortunately, we, do, we will not have uh, so many sensors, but we try to, um, uh, uh, to maybe even apply skin to, this, to, the, to one leg or one arm of Roboi, because skin is a very uh, important uh, component also when it comes to movement. And maybe we will be able to even embed some sensors there but this is, I would say, out of scope because this is, to the best of my knowledge, a non-resolved issue. How could you read out thousands of sensors and which sensors would you then employ? Unfortunately, a really bad ratio, yes. Okay, uh, thank you very much. So I think uh, maybe because time has advanced yes. so much, we should probably uh, stop here. And I would like to thank everyone uh, for participating. I would like to thank Pascal for his presentation.